Hey guys, welcome to the next video in Scala tutorial for beginners. In this video, we will learn how to use sets in Scala. Now, first of all, what are sets? So in Scala, set is a collection of different elements of same data types. So what do I mean by that? So a set cannot have duplicate values inside them. So all values inside a set must be unique. So let's say I have declared in the previous video this uh, list and I have given uh, these values to the list. And uh, when I uh, add some duplicate value, for example, four and four, two times, and when I run the code, it's possible to uh, have duplicate values inside the list. But when I declare a set, so let's declare a set. So a set can be of two uh, kinds, a mutable set and the immutable set. Now the difference between the mutable sets and immutable sets is that that the object itself cannot be changed inside a immutable set okay so how we can uh, declare a set so when we write uh, val my set so this is the variable name and then we need to use the keyword set instead of uh, the list and same we will do here okay and as i said set cannot have a duplicate value but let's say i just added this duplicate value four and four here and same for the set of strings so instead of uh, using list here we will just use the keyword set okay and let's print this uh, my set using print line and i'm going to run the code and you can see even though i have entered duplicate values in my set declaration when I print the set, you can see all values are uh, unique in the set. So uh, only one four is printed here. It has uh, just resolved the set and only one uh, four is present here. So even though you can uh, just repeat the value uh, in the declaration, even though, for example, I have used repeated values inside the set, when I uh, just print the set, all values will be unique. Now, let's say I want to uh, just add something to this set. So by default, uh, when I declare uh, uh, this set like this, all sets are by default immutable, okay? So by default, all sets are immutable. And when I want to declare a set as mutable, then I need to use uh, this kind of notation. So instead of this, I need to use this kind of notation, which is scala.collection.mutable.set. And uh, because it's mutable, let me just change it to var here. And here also in the declaration, I will just uh, write mutable here also. Or even better, I can just remove this from here and that's also a valid mutable set, okay? So whenever you want to declare a mutable set, you can declare it like this, but by default, when you declare a set uh, like this, it's immutable. So let's say I want to add some value to a set. I can just write my set plus 10, right? And let me, let me print the value of uh, my set also. So we can also see the value of my set. So when I use a plus operator and then just add some value to my set, it just add this value to the set. But keep in mind, when I print the my set, my set in itself is not changed, right? So when I add this value 10 to the set, it has created a new set and then printed this set here, okay? but my set in itself is not changed because it's immutable, right? Now, one more interesting thing you can see here is set is not ordered, okay? So sets in Scala are not ordered. That means uh, when I inserted, let's say 10 into the set, this is uh, inserted at this place, which is uh, completely out of order right so it's not added to the end or it's not added to uh, the front it is added to a random place here right so sets are not ordered that means 
you cannot index sets okay so let's say uh, when i say my set and let's say when i say eight here so when i write something like this this means that i want to check whether eight is present inside my set or not right in the case of list this would be the index of the list but there is no such thing like index inside a set so when i write this kind of notation this means that it's want to check whether uh, eight is present in the set or not okay and when you want to uh, learn more about this you can see it's just applying the method and then it will give the boolean value and it test if some element is contained in the set or not okay so let me run the code and let's see what happens when i run the code so it says true because 8 is present inside the set and let's say i just add some random value here and when i run the code it says false because 8888 is not present in my set same you can do for uh, the string set also so let's say i just write max here to name set right and when i run the code it says true and when i just add some random name here it will say false here now let me use three method which we can use for sets and these are let's say my set dot head let's say and then i want to use the tail and i want to use if the set is empty or not so is empty and then i'm going to run this code and what it returns so head returns the first value of set so at this time the first value inside the set is five let's say and the method tail will give you the rest of the element except for the first element and the is empty method is going to check whether the set is empty or not now let's say i want to concatenate uh two sets so i'm going to just remove these duplicate values and what i want to do is i want to concatenate two set let's say here i want to add some more values here so i have declared a set and let's say this uh, set is my set 2 right so this is also a set and let's say i want to concatenate my set and my set 2 so how can i do this and to do this we have two uh, variations one we can use double plus operators and then we can just write my set 2 which is going to concatenate these two values otherwise what you can do is for uh, you can do the same thing using this notation also so you can just write the first set my set let's say and then dot plus plus and in the parenthesis the second set so the second set is my set 2 and this is the same notation as the first which is above this line okay so i'm going to run the uh, code and what you will observe here is uh, this result is showing the unique values in both the sets so in the result the duplicate values are removed okay only the unique values inside both the sets are printed here now let's say you want to just uh, find out the intersection of two sets then you can uh, just write print ln and then uh, first of all you will just write first set and then you will use the notation dot end okay so just use the notation dot end and then the second set which is my set 2 and what it's going to do is it's going to give us the intersection of those set so whatever values are intersecting between these two sets let's say uh, you can see 9 and 9 are intersecting or 4 and 4 are intersecting and 2 and 2 are intersecting so that result will be printed this is the intersection and then all the other values are uh, you know not printed you can do the same using the intersect method also so my set dot intersect and this is also going to give you the 
same result and it will give me the same result in this way uh, you can use sets in uh, scala for more method about sets you can always use for example your set name and then dot operator and then uh, you can see the list of uh, all the methods you can use with the set so let's say for example i want to print out the maximum value i can use max or the minimum value i can use the min and so on and so forth so i'm going to just print the min and max values let's say and here is the min and let me just convert it to print ln here okay print ln and print ln and i'm going to just uh, save the code and run it once again which is going to give me the result 9 and 1 so 9 is the maximum value inside this my set and one is the minimum value one last thing i want to show here is how we can use the set with uh, the for loops so i can just write my set name my set dot uh, for each and then you uh, just uh, can uh, you know iterate over this set so for example i want to print all the values inside the set so i will uh, just write print ln here and this is going to print out all the elements inside my set now let's say i want to uh, use the normal for loop so for that i can just write for and let's say i want to iterate over the names set so i can just write name here and then uh, this arrow symbol and then i want to iterate over the names set right so i will just write names set here and then uh, this name keyword is going to give me uh, every time it iterate over the set the element it's iterating over so i can just write print ln and then i can uh, write name here and let's run the code and let's see what happens so it has iterated over the first set and it had iterated over the second set using the second for loop so i hope you enjoyed this video please wait comment and subscribe and bye for now